Today I'm doing another review of educational software, this time of Memrise. Memrise is a web app and mobile application which claims to be able to help you learn just about anything. And it also says that it's going to make it fun into a game. So this is very interesting to me. It's exactly the sort of software that absolutely fascinates me because my background is in uh, video game design and also neuroscience. And I had originally intended early in my career to build educational video games. And this kind of idea of a, um, a single piece of software that can teach just about anything is in some ways the holy grail of educational video game software. So when I came upon Memrise, I knew that I just had to you know, dig into it and to try it out. The other product reviews I've done on my blog at lifebyexperimentation.com, like reviews of Duolingo, Rocksmith, and Musician, have received a lot of good feedback. So I thought I'd dig even deeper this time and really get into you know, the nuts and bolts of Memrise. So accompanying this video, you'll also find a blog post that's quite long but very detailed over at lifebyexperimentation.com. And you can find the notes, in the notes rather, is a link to that post. And in the notes is a link to that post. So with that said, let's get started. I'm looking at the home screen of Memrise here and they advertise you know, these aspects to their product, the science, the fun, and the community. So it's really billing itself as a scientifically backed, fun game with a community aspect to help you learn more. So there, there's a lot of details about the science here, about elaborate encoding, choreographed testing, about using reminders. Um, they talk a little bit about the fun aspects of, of turning this into a sort of game. All of this is pretty cool and pretty impressive and it's certainly some pretty bold claims. So I want to see how it stacks up. You can look at the blog post to get a little bit more of the analysis of the exact language that they use, but overall here, you can see that uh, there, there's quite some, some strong claims being made about the effectiveness of Memrise. So with that said, I'm going to jump to the home screen here and I'm really starting from a pretty fresh point at this video. I don't have a whole lot in my account, and I'm going to kind of give my reactions or my impressions as I encounter different things in the product. I have tried just a little bit on my iPhone, uh, played around with it a little bit already, but I think it's more interesting to kind of um, you know, share my impressions as I go through the product relatively fresh, and I'll edit it and make sure that hopefully it's um, accurate to the truth of the product. So we can see that there's uh, quite a bit of content up here. They've got their uh, apps being advertised. They have a dashboard and a few different uh, uh, different places for me to kind of poke around. My performance, it looks like, uh, has difficult words that I've encountered. But clearly, the thing that I probably want to do is jump straight into a course. So. In the blog post, I do talk about some of these courses that I tried already, like ear training and uh, detecting or rather recognizing famous compositions in classical music. This time, I'm going to go instead with Chinese for this video. And the reason I'm going with Chinese is it's a language I've studied pretty extensively in the past. I lived in Beijing for a year, so I have a pretty good familiarity with the language, but at the same time, I'm also quite rusty. So I feel like I've been exposed to a lot of the different specialized Chinese language learning software out there, such as Chinese Pod and, of course, Duolingo. So with that, I'll just kind of jump straight in and hit the learn button with this HSK mm -hmm. Level 1 Introductory Mandarin course. HSK is one of the more commonly known uh, Chinese tests out there kind of like a, a standardized language assessment test. And right off the bat, that kind of makes something a little bit evident, which is that Memrise seems to be actually more targeted at people who already have some sort of specific objectives in mind. As a casual learner, somebody with no context, remember, this is my first exposure to the product. There's no good reason for me to actually know what HSK even means. It's just coincidence that I happen to know that. So I think already there's 
a, a certain amount of context being lost or, or missing. And just looking at this screen, if you're not familiar with Chinese, this screen is probably confusing. Now, it's much better presented than the iPhone application. There's much less information overwhelming me, but still looking at it, this NV3 is maybe relatively mysterious. That's a that's sort of a notation technique or rather a way of representing Chinese characters with Roman letters. It's called pinyin and it is essentially telling you how to pronounce it. So this is telling me uh, it's N V or N U with the third tone. So it's a mi sort of falling, rising tone. So with, with all that, like I can't imagine really how a new student would possibly be able to have all of that context. But you know that's okay. The, sometimes it's it's a good idea to be thrown into the deep end. So let's keep going. Let's keep looking at this. There's a few different buttons and different things I see around here. Uh, there's help me remember this, which seems pretty interesting because Memrise talks a lot about how they're more than just a memorization tool. They seem to really focus in their language on how they are a learning tool and how they provide context and so on. So I'll click on this. Okay, so we have this kind of animated video here and it's pretty interesting. We can see that it's trying to connect the idea that Ni, the character, means woman. And I can see that there's um, you know, a lot of different uh, information here. It looks like it has over a thousand thumbs up. So it looks like this was user-generated content here, uh, some sort of reminder or information, ah, okay, provide by, provided by a staff member that other people have liked. So let's see, I can kind of flip through this and see other sorts of reminders. And already here, I start to run into this, these situations where these reminders, these inf pieces of information feel kind of weird in this because they are user generated. The quality and the information, what kind of context is provided seems to vary pretty drastically. There's no kind of coherence that, hook, that um, hooks these different things together. And again, I have not yet been introduced to uh, the idea of pinyin at all. Um, we have just kind of walls of these cards and the only sense of the quality or the, the usefulness we have is how many thumbs up they've gotten. So as I flip through this, I, you know, it does seem pretty useful to have all of these. Wait, what's this? Who wants a hug? <laughs> That's kind of weird, okay? And I've, I've even seen um, kind of questionably and perhaps even not safe for work content show up in here. And there's a, a flag button, it appears, but regardless, um, the I'm, I'm really starting to already doubt the quality or the reliability of these annotations, these kind of additional tools to help with the learning. But I don't want to belabor the point, so I'll just go ahead and hit next. Oh, it seemed to have uh, remembered that. It said that it was going to remember my choice for the for the learning aid. It's interesting. Oh, there's a more button here. Okay. Interesting. So it's going to give me some more other kind of synonymous definitions, I suppose, or other definitions of the same word, which is good. Um, so this kind of dovetails into one of my blog posts about the idea of learning things just with dictionary definitions. I, I call it actually the dictionary problem, which is that when you learn something without context, it can be very, very difficult to ever transfer the knowledge, which is a very important idea. To transfer is to take what you learned and to use it somewhere else, to use it in the real world. It means the actual purpose of learning. So at this point in time, I, I have all of these dictionary definitions, good, fine, easy, well, okay, that's, that's all good and well, but what is this, how is this actually used? Is there a sentence I can see it in? Is there some other context? Um, you know, the, one of the most common phrases in, in Chinese is ni hao, which is hello. It would be really nice 
to have some sort of connection here. Now, I'm not saying that we should overload the user, that the, the viewer, as a student, you want to have all of this information available right away. But as we start to flip through these cards, it'd be nice to start connecting them. Okay, so yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. Woman. Cool. Keep going. How? Yeah. Just keep on flipping through all of these. Wow, oh, that's kind of a strange word to be uh, to have this early on. Hmm. Ha. Um. See, and there it was telling me that that word was a radical. Um, again, if I don't know what a radical is, I don't see why this information is being presented to me. So I'm starting to get the sense that uh, How? that memorize is really meant as more of a How? Um, an, an aid or a sort of supplement for an existing learning program. I can start to see though that the game is giving me, it is starting to interspace or uh, add new information at a pretty reasonable pace and I can see how they've done uh, where the science is coming in to play here um, which is to say that they are not inundating me as a, as a student with a huge amount of information rather they are uh, kind of reminding me of old information and interleaving or interspacing uh, other bits of new information in so I do really like these different contexts that are showing up here of uh, like different ways that I see this information being presented. This is actually fairly similar to something like um, Duolingo where you know sometimes I have to type out the answer. Oops, <laughs> that's what I get for answering and uh, and talking at the same time. But anyway, it's like, I, I do like how they're uh, providing me with different ways of, of engaging with this content. It's definitely something, a very important aspect to improving learning, which wow. is to be exposed to varied circumstances, to varied um, ways of seeing things, like to just hear it, or to just see it, or to just read it, or to just write it. Any one of those alone is never quite enough because at the end of the day, um, we want to be able to do all of them. Presumably, the goal of learning language is to be able to use it in any, uh, in any circumstance. Uh, How? I'm kind of confused right now about the fact that the bar at the top was filled up, but had me keep going for a little while. So that was interesting. But okay, here we go. We're at the end. Uh, looks like we've taken nine minutes to do that. 90% accuracy and 30 correct answers. Cool. I, I like numbers. I like stats. All of this is, is pretty interesting looking. It's definitely good to know uh, some of this information. I'm curious how this will kind of evolve over time if these scorecards start to become um, more than just sheets of numbers or if they can actually tell me something about my progress and what I might need to work on or where I should focus. Because that's where software has the ability to really assist in these process, is to direct my attention and to keep me focused on what I need help with. Now, I I'm not entirely sure if Memrise is using um, spaced repetition algorithms. I haven't dug in deep enough yet. I would assume they are. So spaced repetition 
is a, a fairly well-known educational tool, which essentially is an, a piece of software that can decide when to reshow information. Essentially, as you're forgetting something, it will show you that thing right before you are about to forget it. There's an optimal time to remind you of it. And there's been a bunch of research done on this going back to Ebbinghaus and uh, uh, Dr. Piotr Wozniak in the later 1900s, all showing that this is a very useful technique for memorization. So I, I have some blog posts up on lifebyexperimentation.com about exactly how the forgetting curve works and how spaced repetition works. So if you're interested in those topics, they're the scientific, but quite fun to understand. They give you a little insight into how your brain remembers or forgets these things. Okay, so we finished a level. Um, there's a leaderboard here. So now we're starting to get at the game aspect of this, but honestly, I, I'm a little taken aback by the calling this a game. It feels like a gamified experience, but it does not feel like a game. And that's maybe a fine distinction, but I think that it, it is an important one nonetheless, because ultimately this was essentially a, a flashcard session. Sure, I mean, there, there was a lot more intricacy than just doing flashcards, but it, it was a drill session. And the fact that we have leaderboards and the fact that we have points, th these things can very well help for inspiration and for keeping me motivated and comparing against my friends. These are great psychological tools and tactics that assist in keeping people engaged. And that's great, but I don't know if that deserves to be called a game. This is a drill. I mean, honestly, that's what it is. And to call the game seems like a bit of a stretch. So, uh. I pressed the green button to learn new words, and it threw me into uh, another learning session. So I'm just kind of looking around here at some of the other options. We've got this star button, which is, I'm guessing is going to save it into, oh, okay. So apparently that's a premium feature. Um, we also have an ignore button and a few uh, different audio clips. Uh, uh, this is a good time to, to point out, I'm really impressed with the robustness of memory. It, essentially the things that it can do, the capacities that it has to be able to have Chinese words, to be able to have images and audio and multiple different audio clips and annotations and tips from other users and so on and so forth. That's a very impressive technological framework. As a computer programmer myself, I'm quite in awe of what they've built here. I think it's a very cool thing. That being said, my biggest complaint about this is that it does feel like it is kind of shoehorning a whole bunch of very, very different types of content into what is just one structure. As, as I engage in this content, because it tries to go with this sort of one-size-fits-all approach, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of kind of actual education in that. As I said earlier, it seems to be a good supplement. Like if I were in a Chinese class and had learned those words or been exposed to them, that would have been a great place to start and just to help me memorize those words. So, okay, maybe I should go over the teaching side here. Oh, okay, so that's just for me to create my own content. So we've got a, a lot of user-generated content here. I do, as I said earlier, kind of wonder about some of the quality of it, but I'll certainly give them the benefit of the doubt on that. It does seem to have at least the, the primary lessons themselves seem to be of high quality. But coming back to this actual learning side, I think one of my biggest complaints is that the very word learn almost feels like a misnomer or a misrepresentation here. I would completely agree with calling this memorize and this button to say, like, to memorize things you know already, but to call it learning doesn't feel quite authentic. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we're about to do an ear training lesson here with music, and it says learn new words. Well, first of all, that's wrong. We're not about to learn words, but regardless, I'll click the learn button, and we'll see what happens.
Okay, so a minor third. Apparently that was a minor third, I guess. I am very interested in music, and in fact, one of the main things I'm doing on the blog right now is catalog cataloging my quest to learn music. But what's a minor third, and, and why did I just get thrown straight into that? Help me remember this, I guess. Um, sure. Okay, that helps a little bit, but we're we're so far past anything that I am ready for as a student right now. There's no way I should be attempting to figure out what a minor third is when there has been no attempts to teach me a scale or uh, anything else at all related to this concept. None of the foundational knowledge that would allow me to even understand what a minor third is. And even then, even if I did have some foundational knowledge, I can't believe that a minor third is the really is that really the right place to start ear training? I, I've used other ear training apps, and I think that uh, you know they they ease you into the content. They show you it piece by piece, and just in many applications, you do learn kind of through induction, through um, trying and failing and figuring it out along the way. But to do that requires a very, very tightly honed difficulty curve. In video game design, a difficulty curve is uh, kind of this onboarding, this process, this process of uh, how hard is it and how fast does it get harder. So I would say that the difficulty curve here is way, 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 way too fast. I have no idea what's going on. It should ease me into it and then only then can I learn inductively? Can I learn by doing, by testing and figuring things out? So, okay, yeah, I, I have no idea what smoking the water has to do with a minor third, but hey, apparently it has something to do. Hey Jude, okay, I guess they use, that song uses a minor third. So you, you can kind of see my point here. I, I'm honestly completely at a loss right now as to how I'm supposed to actually learn with the ear training with this. And I, again, I've used ear training, some ear training apps, and I've definitely made progress with them, but I'm already right now kind of too frustrated, too much at a loss to want to continue using this. So I'll hit the exit button there. So for the end of this, I'd like to just kind of uh, poke around the rest of the site a little bit and think about you know, the other things that Memrise appears to do. So it's told me that I've learned four words so far. Cool. Um, we have what appear to be badges and points and other sorts of gamification techniques. Again, to my earlier point that all of these things feel like gamified or game principles, game psychology bolted onto a, uh, a chore. But, you know, it's better than just the chore, I suppose. Learning performance. This is the part that actually really excites me. Uh, out of everything, this is perhaps the biggest redeeming virtue of the whole site, to my mind. The notion of having graphs and goals and objectives, and, and really what it comes down to is metacognition. The ability to visualize and see how my brain is changing and how my brain is working. That is very valuable. It's something that I do manually with just about everything I study or learn through spreadsheets and things like that. For example, I have a blog post where I read a novel in French and I timed how long it took me to read every chapter, how many words I looked up, etc., and graphed over time so I could see that at the early stages it was taking me several minutes to read a page where by the end I was reading a page every minute or so. So to be able to see that progress and understand you know, where I'd come from and where I was going was incredibly motivating and incredibly useful to kind of quantify my progress towards uh, comprehension of French. So I, I love that they do this. I love this graph aspect, though clearly this is a paid feature. So there's that. Difficult words, again, another paid feature. Um, so as we go through all of this, I I guess I'm having a hard time really grasping the value of Memrise versus some other uh, tools or techniques. I, I think that they do have some great um, pieces of technology worked into this, like automatic graphing, 
being able to test yourself in different contexts, not just doing flashcards, all of those things are very valuable. But then that's kind of offset by something that I haven't touched yet on yet, which is the prepackaged content. And this, I think, is a little bit of uh, an interesting challenge. I understand why Memorize had to go with prepackaged content. I understand why they want to give you lessons that are already ready. It's hard to get people to build their own content, and it's it, it creates a really difficult chicken and egg problem where a new user comes to the site, they can't immediately start studying, they have to go and go through this whole process of building their own material. Well, that creates a really high barrier. So I get it. It's probably smart that Memorize built these prepackaged content because it also helps to ensure some quality. That said, I one of the more popular posts on the blog and something I feel quite strongly about is that, especially when you're trying to memorize, you should really go through the exercise of creating your own study materials. To just be presented with a Chinese character that's prepackaged and that you haven't thought about and haven't created your own context for is a recipe for not truly understanding it. It's that dictionary definition problem from earlier. You can sit there and memorize it all day, but if you didn't write the character down to understand the stroke order, if you didn't um, ask the teacher some questions and take notes on what the character means to get some of that nuance, then you're not guaranteeing that you truly understand it. You're just kind of doing the, the, the rote memorization technique, the dictionary memorization. And at the end of the day, for me, I think I would end up actually rather using specialized tools as a result of all of these different tiny deficiencies that I see here. The Because Memrise attempts to be such a one-size-fits-all approach, it puts prepackaged content in front of you that you're not familiar with and might not be in the best context for that particular type of information, like we saw with the ear training. I don't think that that was really a great format for ear training. I would rather use an ear training app that's specialized in ear training. And that's really unfortunate because clearly so much excellent work has been put into Memrise, and they've done a great job building a solid technological platform here, but it's a little too broad. It tries to do too much. And at the end of the day, my biggest problem with the whole product is the representation. They call themselves Memrise, which seems to be an allusion to memorizing. So why then all of this insistence on learning and transfer and so on and so forth? I think those are great goals. And if the product lived up to it, that would be phenomenal. But look, this is a memorization tool. That's what Memrise is. And I wish that they would represent themselves that way. As it stands, there's all, all these claims being made about transfer into the real world and everything that I am having a hard time really believing from what I'm seeing here. The It's a great memorization tool. And at the end of the day, I think it would be a, a good supplement for a course, for a online class, for a college course, um, just to provide ways to study that are not boring old flashcards. If that's what you're using it for, I think this is a great option. But if you're using it as kind of a generic learning tool that, it, that it's supposed to teach you everything about Chinese or everything about ear training, then I think it's going to come up short. So that's really what I have to say about Memrise today. And thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope that you find it useful in your studies. And I encourage you to go check out lifebyexperimentation.com or watch the YouTube channel for other learning product reviews and tips and advice and all different sorts of good stuff to help improve your learning. Have a good day.